Hey Fizz One Kids, Campbell here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the principle of superposition, which is really about interference in waves. And that's something that musicians use to tune their instruments. So what is the principle of superposition? Well, the cool thing about waves is waves can exist in the same space. You can't exist in the same space as another person but waves can and when they do when they're in the same space then the displacement of the medium is an algebraic sum of the two waves so when waves overlap they can have constructive interference so here I have uh, a wave that's blue and a wave that's green and they're in the same medium and so they move as if each other wasn't there so it's like well, I don't even know you're there but the medium knows they're there and so what happens is I get this adding up of the waves. In this case, they add up because the peaks and the troughs are lined up. So I get what's called constructive interference. So constructive interference is where I have an adding up of the waves and I get bigger peaks, bigger amplitude waves. Whereas I could have destructive interference. So if I have waves that are like here off by a half a wavelength, then when I go to do an algebraic sum of those, right, we're going to have some canceling out of that amplitude. So the amplitude of the waves are getting smaller, and that's called destructive interference. So the superposition principle says that when two or more waves are in the same space, the medium is an algebraic sum of those two waves. And it can be constructive, so I could get higher amplitude, or it could be destructive, and I get lower amplitude. So this is called interference, constructive or destructive interference. And constructive interference occurs when both waves have a greater total displacement of the medium than each wave would be separate. So for example, one of the things you're going to have to be able to do is draw resulting waves as they pass through each other. So here I have some random looking waves traveling at one meters per second approaching each other. And if you think about it, in one second, right, they're going to be one meter closer if they're traveling at one meter per second. But what happens now at two seconds? At two seconds, I'm going to have some overlapping. So if we think about what's happening on at two seconds, if I move this wave over one more space, right here it is right here, here is the rectangular wave that I've moved over uh, one more space. You can see that right here, but the resulting wave isn't this. The resulting wave is the medium is going to add up. So I'm going to take this little hat here and I'm going to put it on top. So my resulting wave is this larger wave. What about at three seconds? Well, at three seconds here, now my rectangular wave has moved one more space forward. So here is the original rectangular wave. My little triangle wave here has moved one more step forward, and so there it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece here, because that's the overlap, and we're going to put it on top because it adds up. It's the algebraic sum. And so my resulting wave is this line right here. So when I do superposition, what I do is I'll draw the waves as they are um, in that spot, and then whatever is overlapped, I just take the one and I stick it on top of the other. Now, once we get to four seconds, right, they've passed through each other and they look just like they did before they hit each other. So just because they move through each other doesn't mean they change at all. They actually stay the same. So when they get through each other, they look just like they did before. Let's take a look at one with destructive interference. So destructive interference means that the medium waves will be less in amplitude than the waves separately. So here I have two triangle waves approaching each other at one meter per second. When we get to our next second, now this guy right has moved over here and this one has moved over here. So I have this, so here's the original wave. So I have this segment here being canceled out by this segment. So algebraic, right? One's on the negative side, one's on the positive side. And so these pieces cancel each other out. And so my resulting wave is the algebraic sum of that. So we subtract those pieces and I get that instead. 
What if we move forward by another half a second? So not two seconds, but 1.5 seconds, right? Now this wave here would be here, and this wave, half a second, would be there. So I have this resulting, uh, those two waves, that's where they would be if either of them weren't there, but because they are symmetric and they're on either side, my resulting wave has zero displacement. It's a flat line, it disappears altogether holy cow pretty cool so we'd see the wave we'd see a smaller wave then we'd see zero wave and then they pass through each other and we're back to the situation at two seconds where now i have a little bit of overlap right here's my original waves this little dash line here and this piece is the same size as this piece so those pieces cancel each other out and i end up with that straight line. So the wave I see is the solid line. And then of course, at three seconds, they pass through each other and they emerge unchanged. Now, I know mentally you're like, holy crap, how am I gonna do this? But let's see if we can do it. Let's do some practice. So I have two wave pulses moving at each other at one meter per second. And I wanna know what is the resulting pulse look like at three seconds? I want you to pause the video and I want you to draw these waves uh, where they would be in three seconds and see if you can figure out which of these selections is the correct answer. Well, if you did this right, you would move this wave over three seconds. So one, two, three, right? They're moving at one meter per second. So here is my little rectangular wave. And here's my triangle wave in three seconds. The leading edge would be one, two, three. So here would be my triangle wave. It spans two. So there's my triangle wave. So notice the triangle wave is all the way inside that rectangular wave, which means I am going to add up the whole thing, which means I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to stick it on top because the medium is going to be the algebraic sum. And then I can get rid of that piece and you can see, oops, lost to the bottom, that that would be that. How'd you do? Did you get it? Well, let's try another one. Let's do destructive. Destructive tends to be a little more difficult. All right, in three seconds, what does the resulting wave look like? So I want you to pause the video, move the little guys ahead three seconds. What do you get? All right, so you moved it ahead three seconds, right? So one, two, three, and it spans a distance of two meters. This guy moves ahead one, two, three. So one, two, three, he is here. So I need to subtract this piece out of that piece. So if I subtract it, you know, one of the things you can think of is I take this piece and I just move it up. If I take this section and I move it up here, right, it would look like this. All right, so I'm subtracting this chunk out. So that chunk disappears. So what I have left is this piece right here. Let's see if I go, oh, don't subtract the whole thing. So that's what it should look like. So did you pick B? If you did, you did it correct. Now, we'll do more practice in class. The last thing I wanna talk about is what are called beats. Beats are interference in sound waves that have slightly different frequencies. And what happens if we put these frequencies like that are off just by a couple of hertz, what you hear is this variation in loudness. And how much beats, how many beats you hear is the difference between these frequencies. So for example, here I have a frequency of 440 hertz and I have one of 442 hertz. And so there are places where I get complete destructive interference and I get places where I get constructive interference and that produces this variation in loudness. Now, let's take a look at another thing put together uh, in Australia. This is just a, a great uh, piece here. And let's see what beats sound like. So if we have one beat per second, so that means they're off by one hertz. This is what you would hear. So you hear that? That's one beat per second. And let's say we vary it by three hertz. Do you hear that? Ning, 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 ning. Okay, maybe it didn't quite sound like that. I, I, I. How about 10 beats per second? So off by 10 hertz. So 
if we have a periodic variation in loudness, what's happening, and let's see, here's one that's at one hertz. Here, my values are off by a hertz, and what I get you get that periodic variation in loudness. And the number of beats per second that you hear is the difference in the beat frequencies. And beat frequencies are the way instruments or musicians tune their instrument. If you've ever been to a concert, right, there's the person that stands up there and plays one note and all the other musicians try to play that note and they can tell by listening for beats how much their instrument is in tune or out of tune. We'll do some more of these beats when we get to class because, well, they're pretty cool. So fill out your WSQ and I will see you in class.